I today I will show you the power of simple abstraction and I will use the iterator abstraction to show you. But first I will show basically what is an abstraction because it seems people uh, get easily confused. So let's say that I have uh, the main and I would like to add two numbers. I could do like uh, one plus two and that would do the job. That would add two numbers. But I could abstract it away by making a function that I would call add to which I would give two numbers and that would yield one A plus B. And this is uh, an abstraction because there we have this uh, calculation that is now hidden as one operation that takes two parameters. And obviously a function could be much more complex, but here I took a very simple example. Now that you understand what it could be, we will see the iterator abstraction. So basically the iterator allows to iterate and that's all it does. And uh, we'll use that to solve a problem, multiple problems. We want to represent trees in an abstract way, in a simple way to write them. And then we want to compare if two trees have the same uh, yield when they're um, like uh, browsed in the breadth first way and in depth first way. So th these are two ways to navigate a tree and we want to see if these two ways to navigate can yield the same results given two trees that are uh, yeah, probably yielding the same stuff. So let's see uh, how we could do that. And uh, so the first thing is we need to construct a tree. And for that, I will create a data class that would be a node because yeah, tree is made of nodes and uh, <coughs> any node is the root of a subtree. So there I would say that this one has uh, children and value ends. That's uh, yeah, I would probably use value because val is a keyword, so then I would need to quote it each time. So value is better. And now I have uh, nodes that have in values. And I would like to not do like, I could create my tree by doing this. And then in the children, I could do this stuff. And then here I could say one, for example. And in list of, I would create another uh, node, etc. And I, I would build my tree like that. Or what I could do is use another pattern, which is the interpreter pattern. And, uh, and it's an abstraction too. So now I could encode my tree and then decode it. That's what I will do. So for that, I would need a function like a tree parser or tree and marshaller. Voilà. Or yeah, maybe in marshall in 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 marshall tree. Okay, that's not the correct uh, spelling. Is this like uh, with a C? In, in, in Marshall. Okay, there's no E, e, e at the end. So that's the function. It would take a string and it would return a node. That looks good. And uh, yeah, but the tree we didn't define what it would be. So for now, I would just return a node. 
that would be uh, empty just to make it happy and here we will decide on the format and that format is quite standard i would use s expression so let's uh, do val t1 that will be my first tree and that would look, look like this and i have a node that has the value one and it has first children that would be two and uh, this one would have two children two one and two two and then uh, there i would have another children that would be three and this one will have only one children three one so now we can see the path of each node by looking at the number now i need to pass that string and uh, for that i could just iterate the string so i could do uh, iterator and that would yield the uh, iterator that's a built-in one and why i do that because i will pass the string and i will move uh, in the string and i will need to pass this digit which means that i will need to nest loops and advance the iterator until i'm not uh, anymore on a digit and the idea would be that if i see this i would create a new node and if i see this i know i'm done with the node so I would say create node, pass the number, create a child node, pass the number, create a child node, pass this number, pop, and etc. So let's uh, try that. So now what I need to do is uh, while as next, which is good, we want the next character, which is good. We want to do something according to the next character and there i would say uh, so i have this case uh, am, am i in a french mode or something yeah i will just uh, switch no is it uh, better not really ah okay there was an okay an update that is not good so i, I will keep uh, my current layout so, so we have this we have this and that's all we need so we need to parse when it opens and we need to parse uh, to do something when it closes. so if it opens we said we create a new node But also, this node needs children, but it also needs uh, a value. And I realize, okay, let's change the definition of node because it's not a list. It will be a mutable list because we need to change the, this. So there, I need uh, to create a new node. That's the thing. But I also need to parse uh, this. So I will do the parsing. So while uh, as next, then I get the value. And there, yeah, I'm not happy with that. So now if I this, I get the value. If n uh, is digit. Then I want to do uh, double digit building so what i need here is val number yeah, okay that wasn't good number is uh, like zero and then the number is the number times this times this time time 10 sorry uh, times 
10 plus the digit so that would be the thing and this one ah, it's a uh, I did put val, it should be var. <coughs> so now I'm just adding a digit to the right of my number. And when it's not digit, then that means that the current character, if I take uh, this, is a space. But if I look at this one, it would be the closing bracket. So my cursor would be there and I need my cursor to be there actually. So what I will need is to go back but this iterator doesn't uh, allow to go back so I will add something for that so yeah you see that they are already pushback stuff so I would just do a pushback iterator which is not a fun but a class and uh, <coughs> this would be a uh, I could do T, why not? So it's a generic and then uh, open. And now I need uh, to, yeah, okay, that was, I need iterator obviously of T. And I will ask the ID to do uh, this. So it create the methods for me. And basically, we want to push back one character. So. I would just say uh, that I have a private t. I don't know if I can do no, uh, uh, value. The view. I could do uh, a of type t. Uh, doesn't like it. Uh, because I'm missing uh, this. Okay, let's try if I can. Yeah, I can. That's, that's good. So now I have this uh, nullable tip. And um, I can say, okay, if. So, uh, yeah, there I have two cases if uh, I have a next. Either the. It, ah, yeah, I'm missing something here. That is quite important. I need uh, this. I need to have an instance variable that is the work iterator. And so this is actually another uh, pattern. It's a decorator, hence the work. And that's a decorator that has the capability, the capability to push back. So that's another abstraction. So now uh, v, v, so either, so if v is not null or ah yeah wrapper does next and i don't need the if i can just do return so there is a next value if v is not null or if the warp iterator i can uh, as the next value and that's good and the next value there i would say if v is not null then i would uh hit i will yeah okay then then i need uh, first to do uh this so because there i know v is not null i can set v to null and return tmp In other case, I can do wrap not next. Yeah, so that's that's all. So now I have my pushback iterator, which means that here, when I break this uh, loop, so here I will need a break, which would break that loop. 
And before uh, that break, I would need to push back. I have to. I have to change this to be a pushback iterator. And now this has gained one method I can call, which is the pushback method. So I would go there and I can do string iterator pushback. No, I can't. Why? Because I did an implement pushback, yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. So I will do fun pushback value t and the equal value. Yeah, that's uh, not simple. So let's do. And I want to push, and that's where I have to be careful. Uh, n is digit, so that's an n and not ch. So. Is it, co is it correct? Yeah, that's n. So I would push back n. So n is not a digit, so it's a space or closing parenthesis. Yeah. Okay, and that's it. Then it will do the loop, and uh, yeah, that looks uh, good. So I have my number, and I need to keep track of the current nodes. So. So I would do an empty node to, fa to start. And uh, so this node, this node is just discarded. Because there I would say that uh, when you are going to break, so that means you read the number, then you can do cure node equal a node multiple list and the number, which is perfect and also you need to push that on a stack because when you will enter the child uh, you need to know the path to it or at least you need that when you end the child you need to go back to the parent so I need a stack and that would be a stack of uh, node which is good so now i have that stack and there i would just add the line and i would say stack dot push the current node so there i have the thing and also what i want to do is not only that but i want to attach uh, this node to this to its parent so what i will do is I would say that if I have something in the stack, then I attach to that something. So before pushing to the stack, if the stack uh, is not empty, so if, if I have something, then I can do stack. Uh, that uh, peak, so that's the parent that the children that add current nodes. So if there is a parent, so that uh, that is this line. If there is a parent, then I take the parent and I take the list of children and I add the current nodes, and then I push this current node to the stack. So the next children will be that. When I see this, I can do a stack that pop, which is there. It's not what I want. I can pop, and that's it. And now I need to return something. So if we look at this, we see that these are the pop operation on the stack, and to get the root node. That would be the last pop. So the last pop we can identify. So here I would say if 
and now I need to know the size. So not it's not empty, but that will be stack dot a size is equal to one. That means there is only one node on the stack, and I'm I'm currently popping it. Then cur node equal this. Otherwise, we just pop the stack. And uh, yeah. I'm wondering if I could do uh, better, but so I have the current node, uh, this can be a one, and I have a stack, but I also know because, ah, uh, then I, so I have this, uh, then I would need to make uh, this uh, null, yeah, okay, and I don't want, so this would work, and uh, yeah, let's try to see if it works. So that's the first test we will do is to parse uh, this thing. And uh, for that I would do in Marshall uh, tree. And I will just print it. Let's see if it goes well. And uh, it seems to go well. So now I have a node that has children. The children is 2, 3. And this one has no children. Then it has 2, 4. Which will, which looks uh, weird. So two, two, three, two, four. Value three, value one. That's totally uh, looking like random stuff. So a children is a node that has children. That is a node, that's a children. That doesn't, and it's 2-3, two, 2-3. Three. Two, three. Okay, I don't know where uh, the 2-3 comes from. Ah, yeah, okay, I know. So now I need to... Uh, this is 2-I, so it needs to be like uh, here. No, it's, it's good, it's there. So we get a number. So next, if n is digit. So we do digit to end. Okay, then I need to debug. Let's see, up. Next, next. There is uh, three correctly forms. I think so. so. Next, next, next. So we open. So the, it's a digit. not a digit so we are putting one and we push the current node that looks good so now we have this is a space so we skip everything this is opening, so we take number at two zero. Okay, so now we are passing the number two. 
now the num the current node is uh, with number two. We pick, we get the children which is zero, and we add the current node, and we push the current node. Okay. So now <coughs> we have another uh, space, so we keep, and then we open a parenthesis. So we are, uh, where are we? We are, we are here. So it's the children of that one. So number is equal to two. stack is not empty, so now what is in the stack? We have the number with 2 and we are adding a node with 2, 3 and uh, uh, 2, 3 is where? Ok, so I don't see how I got my 2, 3 Let's zoom out so where is my uh, two three coming from? Values stack iterator. I pass the so number plus equal number time ten, which is original number plus the digit to end. Okay, so that one is uh, so mutable list, and then search number. So each time I see that, I first thing I do is reset this, and then if I still have a next thing, then I take the next thing. If it's a digit, then I take the number to which. Ah, okay, okay. That's not plus equal, it's just that. Okay, that's uh, okay. Then I do this thing. Okay, let's try again. So now I have what? I have this node that has a children that has 2 1 and 2 2. And then I have 3 1 that is a child of 3. So one has a child of three and a child of two. And there I have three one. Okay, so that looks better, that looks correct, because this one has only one child. So that's the thing. And uh, yeah, so that's the implementation basically. Now, what can we do with that? We can create an iterator that will iterate the, way, the tree in two ways. And uh, so let's implement that. And uh, for that, I will not do the iterator first. I will do and uh, uh, BFS first, and uh, and then I will copy the algorithm into the iterator. It's easier that way. The root would be a node. And now what we need is a stack. And uh, then we need a while. Yeah, so we need to push the first the root into the stack. 
and while there is something in the stack we do pop it and uh, we do like stack uh, no not stack we do node it should run uh, then uh, for each so for each uh, the children we do stack the push the children and that's it so the, what will happen is that we have a stack that uh, contain the root the root is taken then we push all the children uh, okay then we need also to reverse the so and then and then we take the children and we go uh, right to left to push them into the stack so when I would do the second iteration I would take the first children and I would do the same stuff so that means that in the end we will go deep as uh, DFS we will go deep into the tree okay and then I would need to make it yeah, uh, something useful like display the value so that's a that first uh, search or navigation and the bfs is like the df the this one but this this time we want to change the way we we um, iterate the tree and we want for each uh, children we want to take the siblings and so that way that means that I go to the first child, so I would push the first, second, third child, and when I retrieve them, I want to get first <coughs> the first child, then second, then third child, and, and not uh, the, uh, yeah, the siblings. So I would just say here, I would transform that to Q, and the RQ is uh, an interface, so I continue it. So I will do just Q here. And I will do ink at list. Now counter. Okay, yeah, let's see. Let's see uh, what implements. Uh, I think I think it's a list, but uh, okay, not useful because I'm in a uh, big font. Ah, yeah, because it should be a queue of node. And uh, there, I let's, can do like this. So now I have a queue. So the push becomes offer, and the pop becomes pull to get the first. And this one will be offer. So what will happen there is like I will get the and there yeah, okay and then this needs to disappear so I will get the children and I will put them in the queue so that means that they would be processed in the same way they did enter the queue so the first I put in the queue would be the first to be processed so yeah and then so that means that I would go layer by layer because I would put the root in the queue and then next iteration the root would be taken then i would put node one and two uh, in the uh, two and three in the queue so when i would go there it will take two and then it will push the children but the children would be processed after because the tree is already uh, in the queue so that would be the next so that's two ways to do that and we can print this uh, let's command this. So I would uh, yes, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, not good. I would need to. To have something like that because I expect node here. Now I should see two ways to uh, browse the tree. 
probably good to describe what it is. That way it's better. So now we see what uh, each of this will do. So if I look at this, I have one, so that's uh, bread first. So that means that I go layer by layer. So we see one, two, three, and then two, one, two, two, and three, one. So th these are, this is the uh, roots, and then the first layer, and then the second uh, layer or level, which is uh, correct. So first layer, second layer, and third layer. So and uh, the DFS is doing one two 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 uh, one two two one, and then two two and then three three one. So the, there we have uh, DFS one two two one two two three and three one. So we see that we have two ways to uh, iterate the tree by using these two methods. And now I will convert that to iterator, and it's simpler that it looks. So. Let's do a DFS iterator and that would implement a iterator of node, good. Then we'll say to the ID, please create the members for me. And then it creates. And now these are the things where we need to know what to put there. And that's why I wrote the algorithm first. So now, I have this and what I will do is I will copy all of this in my DFS and I will put it in next. And next is one iteration of my while. So what I need there is the as next. Yeah, I know that it's like this. So I can do return yeah, because it can uh, only do uh, next when uh, there is something in the stack. And this stack is my global, my local state. So I can do this. So, and okay, so I just said that uh, this next was the while stuff. So I can remove this. And now I can check if it would work, I have the println I don't need. Would it work? Yes. So I can do return the node. So now if I call next, we see that it would pop the node. It would push all the other node into the stack. And then it would return the node. And if you do as next, it just check. So that's the while. And that's the body of the while, which is totally what we want. Uh, okay, so on that uh, premise, I can modify this one to be a BFS. And I don't need to think uh, much more because we saw that all we had to do is this, to say that this is a queue. So I just need to say queue. And that uh, would be a linked list. And actually, uh, the stack here could be a linked list. But I'm not sure if, uh, yeah, because stack is a uh, is um, a class. That that's just because it was uh, a bit. Uh, It, it was like legacy stuff. So I did just improve the DFS there. And this one would be a queue. And so it would be poll. And that would be offer. So th these are the same changes I did uh, before. And there I probably want to type it as a queue. 
so that way we can't call a method that we don't need. Okay, so now we have the queue pool and queue offer. And yeah, I also removed that in the other implementation. And now we have the two ways to iterate the tree. So let's see how we can use that. So I could go there. Then I could replace this. And that. By my iterators. So I can do a DFS iterator, which take N1. And then I would do a for each. So why it doesn't like ah yeah because I, I I missed something very important that I need to provide uh, the node. Obviously, and uh, so that means that I need an init method. Yeah, that's when you do on the spot. So and then in the queue I need to offer the root and in DFS uh, I would need to push so, that, so that's DFS and that's DFS so same stuff root which is a node and there here I would do init and that would be push yeah, that's unfortunate that because this is a uh, stack and queue, so that's uh, like, uh, yeah, not okay. That's the best I can do there to use uh, this new implementation. Okay, so now uh, all of that to do what? To do this. And here we'll do println it that value. And uh, for the other one, we do a DFS. Uh, and you can see that these two lines, they look really the same. There is only this letter that changed because I'm using a different iterator. So that shows that there is something interesting happening. Okay, let's run. And uh, so the BFS, so layer by layer, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, which is correct. DFS is branch by branch, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, then 3, 3, 1. So our two iterators are working uh, as they should, which means that now I can write a very abstract method. And uh, yeah, where would I do that? Yeah, I can uh, remove this uh, two reference implementation and I would do like a method that allows to compare two sequences or two lists. So, je is same, is same uh, iterators like this, for example, that would return a boolean. That's the easiest part. I obviously need the two uh, iterator, but there I don't need, I don't want to uh, be too specific about what is uh, being iterated, so I'm using generics. And I will do the same here. And now I need to go through this. So I would say while it a one as next and it a two as next, then I can compare uh, if it a one dot next that equals it a two dot next. And uh, yeah, so there, because next can be null, but uh, I knew, I know it's not the case because it has next on both sides. And yeah, that's uh, Kotlin, so I'm doing a Java and Kotlin, which is not good. 
I can actually use this uh, double equal and I can even do that. So if they are not the same, we are done. We don't need to iterate the whole stuff. Otherwise, we leave the while and there are two reasons for that. Either we did exhaust the two of them and we are fine or uh, one of them is longer than the other and that means they are not the same they don't yield the same uh, values so there i would do it uh, that as next so if this or it uh, to dot as next if one of these two uh, as uh, an extra value then they are not the same they do not yield the same values so if this or this still yield the value then they are not the same that's why it is on it and that's it but now what i see there is like uh, there it should be that value but i don't have access to that value and uh, this would be uh, by address and because I deserialize or unmarshal the tree twice, I would have different addresses, so this would not work. So I need a way to do that, and that way is simple. I need a comparator. Comparator of what? Of these types. And that way, I don't need to handle this thing there. I just can do cmp dot compare or uh, even have uh, yeah, no, I would do compare and then t1 so it dot next and it two dot next and uh, we know the return uh, values and uh, it should be equal if it's not equal to zero because compare return zero when they are equals then it would return false so if it's not equals then return false and that's what uh, we need so now if i want to call this let's do it uh, so i have my uh, things here Uh, it's stupid, but that's uh, so now I can do println is same uh, iterators and I can do bfs uh, iterator of n1 and uh, bfs uh, iterator of n1. And I need the comparator, so the comparator of N1 and N2. Will be N1 dot value uh, minus N2 dot value. So now this uh, things is comparing two nodes. And you have to know that this method doesn't know about this, doesn't know about this, it doesn't know about anything, it just know it gets a list, something that is iterable, will iterate it until this would say that they are not the same. It's all it knows. So the most abstract thing in this code is this function followed by this iterator. So if we run that, it should be true. because we are comparing itself to itself. So now let's uh, make a T2. And uh, yeah, let's think about it. So now I want to flip a bit the tree. So uh, this one would be a DFS, let's say, and I want to make it BFS. So at, I would have one. And then uh, the child run will be two 
So one and two. And two would have uh, three as the children. So one, two, three. Then the next layer would go there. And that would be uh, two, one. Two, two. And three, one. So that would be the, I think, the, so if this one is a DFS and this one is a BFS, they should have the same stuff. So let's try. BFS, so uh, N2, and Marshall T2, and then I uh, would say BFS. Of, so I said, uh, so okay, let's do DFS here, and BFS here. And now there, uh, N1, N2. So now I, I expect these two to be the same. Let's try that first. So the 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1. 1, 2, 2, 1, 3. Okay, so the BFS wasn't uh, like I expect. But uh, I can take this output and uh, yeah, so let's do that. So if I want to do a BFS, I need to have one. Yeah, I could, I could uh, do uh, even uh, one, two, one, two, let's say first layer, second layer. Yeah, okay, why not? So let's try this. So first layer is one, and then it would be two, and two, one. And then here I would like to have uh, like two, two, and three. And three. And there I would have three, one. Yeah, there are, there are multiple solutions for uh, T2, T2 because yeah, that's just uh, putting stuff at the same layer. Let's try if I got it correct. Okay, so now I have 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1. 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1. So they look the same. So now if I go there, BFS and uh, Lana. So if I put a D here, and here I put N2, it should stay true. And it stays true. So now we have a DFS and a BFS. And we see that these are the two different trees, and that these are the two different trees that are there, and it returns true. So it's working as expected. And I could also do, uh, let's say that this one, I would uh, do a list of, and now I will create nodes. So uh, what I will do is something like one, two, oops, I would do one, two, two, one, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 3, 3, 1, and uh, I would map that list to a uh, node. So it would be empty with empty uh, list of nodes. I think, yeah, because it has to be a mutable list, so I will need to give a... And there, I would say it, so the value. And I will create a list iterator. A run iterator, yeah. 
So now, yeah, that's a bit complex, but what I did is on one uh, parameter, it's a list, and uh, I create an iterator on the list, and then I have my BFS iterator on N2. And if I run that, it will be true and true. And what it just shows is that this method doesn't care about the structure of the things that is being iterated. All it knows is I iterate some list of t, and t is not even known, and I have something to compare them. And then this logic is very abstract, because if I ask you how you would compare if two lists have the same content, so I don't give you any clue on how uh, the list is there, you would say, I would iterate both lists, and I would look if at the same position I have two different elements, and if it's the case, I know there's a, they are not the same lists. Otherwise, if I continue and then I'm at the end of one of the two lists before the other, then I know they are not the same because one list is longer. So that's what is written there. So it's, it's very, very high level, uh, very high level code. And then the iterator is high level code, and then the tree is yeah, very concrete. Huh? I mean, uh, the tree, that's the implementation, it's like very specific on what it is. And uh, because we did all of this, I could also say that it's a node containing C stuff, which means that this would contain this kind of stuff, and this would contain uh, this kind of stuff. Now I have errors everywhere because these expect uh, nodes, but I could do put T everywhere. Okay, it's not there. Where, where should I put that T? Okay, and then I put T. T, T everywhere. And uh, there, I would so now I know it goes there. So I can put T, T, T. Yeah, sorry. Okay, let's uh, simplify this. And uh, yeah, still have some uh, errors. So now I need to precise uh, what it is. So what is uh, N2? It's just a node, so that would be a node of T. And uh, yeah, so I need uh, T. Node of T. Uh, where is the things that is uh, missing there? Ah, but it was numbers, so yeah, that would... Okay, okay. I can't go that far because this parsing... Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, knowing something about uh, what is contained in nodes. So that breaks at that point, because this one has this specificity. It has knowledge about how the node uh, is uh, made. So if I do, if I specialize it, now I have this uh, implant. So this one, take a t, uh, which would be int. Yeah, which looks uh, stupid in the... Uh, ah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. That looks stupid because I did left the... So now this one would uh, know that it's about int. 
and then we can see that everything is working as it should and that means that uh, I could have so yes this would should be in Marshall uh, yeah, let's say Marshall int so that's what it should be called because there we are knowing how t1 is uh, made so we know that it's int if I wanted to have letters then that would be a bit different because I would have the same uh, logic than this one and uh, in Marshall uh, letter and now uh, now I can use this letter and this would not be a number but it would be uh, like a name for example and the name would be just a concatenation of the letters then here I would need to do ah the name sorry it's not the name okay why uh, uh, because the name should be a string and this one does ah yeah because it's a node of a uh, string and this one uh, why does it ask an int because this one is probably yeah. okay so now this one is initialized properly and this one why because uh, why 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 required so this one no so that means that somewhere I did uh, node string okay so now I have the new stuff that is working and I had to do that because just this part of the algorithm knows too much about uh, how to to do that and uh, yeah it could be uh, if and this letter so this part and this part could be uh, changed in this part too by saying how to do the check and how to uh, do this so like for example we could do a value builder and that would be able to say okay is this part of the value and is this uh, so let's uh, try that so for that we need to create a class an interface to be uh, value parser fragment yeah that looks weird but that's the name that I would give it because that's effectively the uh, fragment of the parser and uh, yeah this one should go there maybe yeah okay and uh, I need two things I need to accept uh, so that would be phone accept and that would return a boolean and that would accept what it would accept t oh, no we know we know that we are passing uh, characters and then we would have phone and uh, there we have the name plus uh, na 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 
Yeah, okay, so I could I could do everything in one go because uh, if it's true, then blah blah blah. So then we'll do something with the value. So I would say uh, try parse and then uh, there I would say uh, then I need so if it's the case then I need to be able to retrieve the value yeah, and, the, and the get value will be of type T that's, that's the thing and so now I need to do uh, yeah, so I need to do two two classes class uh, string value parser which extend or implement this with a string and uh, yeah this need to implement uh, some numbers which is normal and what I need to do is to do value is a string okay I could I could go like this private var value is a string try parse so I would do if chr dot uh, is letter value plus equal uh, chr and return true we did it else return false and the get value that would be return value and then I need um, in value parser So now I have an int here, and this would become a zero. Here it would be is digit because we want to know if it's a digit, and the value would be the value time tens plus uh, chr dot digit to int, and we we could do it with return. Otherwise, we return false. This required to get the uh, int, and this required this. So now I have these uh, things. So that means that here I need to unmarshal. Uh, so I would, I will create a third uh, method, but that would be smarter. And that third method would say unmarshal tree, and it needs to take a type. That it would the return of that type, but there we need uh, where, where, how I said uh, it was called it was a fragment value parser fragment of type T. I want to keep the same uh, thing here, so now this we need to have a default value which is uh, not uh, that good because uh, I don't have here because this is taking too much into account but let's fix that part so VPF so now I can do this uh, um, try parse so what I would do is if not uh, VPS try this and then uh, N. So if I was not able to pass, then I can uh, so the name can disappear. And that would be vpf dot 
get value. Okay, because this one is uh, like uh, using this. Yeah, but I can't. Uh, no, I can't do that. So there, I need a way to to know. So this one is taking this. So yeah, I would need to say. Yeah, I think I have no choice but to make it uh, like new level. But it won't a type, but the type would be T, which is not an issue. And we'll begin with null. So now we need to add the current node. So this one would uh, be of the correct uh, type so can I uh, do now but I can certainly no not even okay let's take this as a node t no, the T. So I think it's this. Huh? So now it accepts this. So did I... Uh, I don't see the change in there, but okay. Okay, okay, it's in the, okay, it's in the call side, okay, okay. So now, this one. is not empty, it should run. We add what? We add this. This is defined by uh, whatever is given there. Okay, we can't do that. So T extend any. And now we have this issue because this, what does it expect? It expects a node of type T. And I don't want to create uh, this extension method, so... Yeah, can I do the... No. Okay, so there I'm stuck because... Okay, if I do... Hmm, so I need to have something that would... Okay, so... That's uh, okay, then uh, I need something else there. And that would be an empty node. And that way I can say that this would be the empty node. doesn't take uh, this node
they are still not helping us so now because this one should know but there it doesn't so it expects a node of type string why where do I, do I ah because there I have a string Okay, let's see if uh, this was required even. Okay, so this I can't. Okay, so I, I need to provide uh, this. So now, now it does everything I want. So this one knows nothing about uh, the type of node we have. And we could still uh, parse stuff. So let's try that. So that method would be called in Marshall tree. So we do an Marshall tree. We need the string. We need the, this uh, thing, which need to be an object. Let's say it's int. And this one would be a node int. And there we say a uh, mutable list after. And there we say zero. So that would be the empty one. There we need to implement the members. So there it will return searcher.isdigit. And there it would be. Uh, so we need uh, the number and there we just need to say number uh, 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 so uh, there we need to say return number and here if number is digit then uh, we do the number stuff and that's it and uh, and we return true because that's the contract and there we return false. So now I have this uh, in Marshall tree for N1 and uh, yeah, I could, okay, I could let it that way. And we have false and true. Okay, and this this uh, object stuff I could uh, and I, I can put it on the side. So what I can do is uh, that I have the the, the what is that thing is a uh, Marshall uh, in Marshall entry that could actually implement the. this and oh, no, it's a, it's a uh, yeah it's a function so uh, yeah so this one I need to create uh, the classes for that so I could do class uh, int value parser fragment 
that implements this and I can uh, just cut all, all of this I think Oop. and put it uh, here yeah, almost almost so I could put colon here and paste so now I have this that parse the end copy paste and there I would do a string that would be a string and that means that the string would be equal to an empty string I would do that as there equal or I could be plus equal and that would be chr and there it would be is letter okay get value would return a string and that would be str so now uh, when I build my tree I can instead of uh, passing this I can do int value parser Okay, let's see. So now I have, ah, okay, I have these uh, things. And why it is so, that's because this one is being reused. So um, what I can do is uh, make it reset when it gets the value, because that means it's done, so. And uh, and then I would say and then I can return TMP and for the string that would be the same uh, val TMP equal value and value equal this and return TMP. Let's try again. And now we have true true and we are back to what we had before. That why why I did all of these uh, things is that because now if I take my uh, main let's remove the commands so more fit on the screen. Let's see that let's say I want to say that it's a a b b let's call that c so that would be c there d d e e f f now if i run that it will just blow up because these are letters okay uh, yeah, it doesn't blow up but it does uh, this which is not what we want now we want to parse uh, string so I will just say okay this this is not needed let's see up yeah so now I can say like in Marshall uh, letter tree and there I can do string value parser there it packs it as uh, incorrect so I just need to to replace there and that's it and done so I see an error ah, yeah. and there yeah, I need to change the comparison ah, yeah, value dot compare to And that's it. So now I have the. No, I still have one. Uh, what is that uh, error? Ah, yeah, same, uh, same uh, comparator. Okay. 
So the, this one I could extract. Uh, yeah, okay, I could extract it as a node value comparator. But uh, okay, that's a. Uh, Another thing, so I'll just copy paste that here. And what is this one? So this one, uh, N1 compared to N2. Okay, so that doesn't know about. Uh, Now it doesn't like it. So that's because CMP. And F node something something. So why is this one? Ah, uh, because okay, these are, these are okay because these are uh, these are like yeah, okay. A B C. Yeah, I can't compare uh, ins to letter, so that makes sense. And now it should be yeah, now it's happy. And I don't need all that noise. Okay, that was because this part was incorrect. So all the inference breaks. Okay, now we have something and I can run it. And it works. So it's just how it is. And what we can see there is that we have a very high level of abstraction because now we have something that can unmarshal a tree and all we have to provide is the tree itself how to read the label of the, the values of the trees then how to create an empty node or at least an empty node and that's it so I could use numbers, letters, or whatever. I could even try JSON. Just have to build that properly. And it would uh, pass uh, JSON. So that's the idea behind this, is that I did implement the three parsing months. And all I require from the user is to provide me how to read this part and how to create this. Ah, not how to create, but an example of one of these that is empty, which is this. So that's the reason of abstraction is that now that can be reused in many ways. And we know that this foundation is working. So if this is done correctly, and by this, I mean it's these two small methods. If they are done correctly, then the tree would be correct. So now it's much easier to create a vast array of trees by just doing this part correctly. That's uh, yeah, that's the value behind this. So. When I wrote that, I took, uh, I don't know how long, but uh, yeah, almost uh, one hour and a half to get there, just to parse a tree, just to parse that tree. Took uh, that time, but now I can parse the tree, I can iterate it in different ways, and I can do comparison uh, 
of values in the tree according to how I navigate them. And all of that in one and a half half and I can make it work with like a without entry and string tree. And without that to go from into string, it didn't take uh, much work. Voilà, so I hope that it did illustrate uh, the use of uh, abstractions and different way to abstract stuff because we saw that one way is to make uh, like a parser or something. So this is actually an abstraction on how to represent a tree and it's called as expression. We saw that method themselves are abstraction uh, like uh, this one and we saw that there are different levels of abstraction because now this method is highly abstract because this method knows almost nothing uh, like this is just knowing that it's dealing with node of something and that the input is a string and then it relies on other abstractions to do its logic so it knows okay I can get the next stuff and then I, uh, while I'm getting the next stuff, I can try to pass the value. And if I can't pass the value, then that means I am into the node. So I can retrieve the value. But we don't need know if it's a string or if it's an int or maybe it's a complex structure. We don't know and we don't have to. Because that's logic to unmarshal the tree. So the, the hierarchy has no business knowing about is this a tree of people, is this a, a tree of uh, number, is it a tree or whatever. It doesn't have to know that. It does just have to know it's a string that represents a tree. And that's it. Right, I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, it's a big, uh, long video and I was... Uh, trying to find how to make this stuff but I think that the process is uh, interesting to, to see how we can come up with that kind of abstraction and I know that outside uh, Java works people are like yeah it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy they, they do like uh, this kind of abstraction where you have this kind of name and and that's the mockery like yeah it's a big fat name of whatever, but the thing is that these libraries are very powerful because as a user, what you see is this, and that's very expressive, and yes, when you encounter this the first time, it's like, what the fuck, because it does so much with so little that it's very hard to piece together because, yeah, it's not like a intuitive to see okay I can do that much job with that few things it's like just not uh, but that's what uh, make it uh, powerful is that you have a lot of these primitives that makes nice primitives abstraction sorry that makes it very easy to build complex stuff uh, but you need to understand the whole of these things because if you see this you would expect to have one string and that's it and then these things knows as every insight on that uh, t1 that's how uh, people do generally they just say okay i have this string and i know it's as label that are letters and i know and i know and they know everything and this method then it, it has a good knowledge of the structure and it knows everything and then it's a big fat method and when you replace this by uh, something else like number then you need to clone that method you need to create a new one because the initial method had too much knowledge about everything and that's uh, that joined the uh, banana jungle stuff where this method, as it is now, it's very versatile because it has zero knowledge. So it's not pulling the whole forest because you wanted a banana. And, but that requires that you 
tell to the method how to do some stuff. That's the, the drawback. So now this method as it is, it has no knowledge. So you need to say, yeah, but if you want to uh, parse a value, you have to do it that way. And if you need an empty node, this is how it looks like. Yeah, but that way, because you do that, you can simply do this. Let's say it's a T3. You can, you can uh, do this. And, uh, and that's, okay, that's a totally, it's not letters, but no worries. You can do that. And you are done. That's your implementation. I just change few things and it will build a tree and that tree will contain these uh, numbers. And that would be real numbers. So now I can do this. And it's an int, and so that's the power of it. I don't have to copy paste and stuff and stuff. Just and yeah, just switch this. So switch this for that. And so if you want to extend it, all you have to write is is this. So like. Uh, what, what could do uh, class uh, boolean value parser or a binary value because it's uh, is easier to do. So now I have this. I would extend this, but uh, that would be an uh, int. Okay, and then I, I would implement. And now I need to have uh, my... Uh, so basically, I will uh, just be lazy. I will take that one. I would put that one here. But the, the thing is, there I would do times two. Because it's binary. And that's it. So now I have a binary parser. Which means that uh, here... I can uh, duplicate this. Can do one, one uh, zero, one 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 one, and then uh, one zero zero, one zero one, and one one zero, and uh, let's say them and and four, and that would be binary parser. And that's it. I'm done. I did create uh, So let's print uh, maybe. Show that uh, it's not fake. So let's remove all that uh, things. And then I would do like uh, BFS. Uh, now DFS. Iterator. Of N4. And then I would have my for each and I would do println it dot value and run and I have zeros everywhere so that that did fail. Uh, what would did fail? Binary binary ah, yeah, because I took T1 obviously so that couldn't pass it. So now T4, which is the binary stuff. And now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's the magic. And uh, to show that uh, I would do BFS and it will shuffle the numbers. And it doesn't. Ah, yeah, it does. 1, 2, 5. You see? 5, 3, 4, 6. And if I do DFS. Then they are in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 
we see that now with all this abstraction I can use different kind of trees could be JSON too could be whatever you want and yeah but well, I think I made the point quite clear of why it was worth to spend some time on this and uh, but the point was not to implement the tree the, the, this kind of stuff the point was to show how doing good abstraction could lead to code that is very flexible and easy to use because I didn't have to touch that it's done it was correct I would say and now it's done for forever and there is no way no need to touch that the only thing I will need is to touch this and to do this which is not a big uh, huge work think once reuse